welcome everyone today we are going to learn in brief about down syndrome in children the goals of our discussion will be how to recognize the clinical features of down syndrome uh, to understand the basic genetics associated with down syndrome basics of prenatal diagnosis how to do the clinical assessment of children suffering from down syndrome and how to assess the children periodically by the health supervision first let's uh, do some brainstorming which of these is the correct spelling whether it is down's syndrome whether it is down's syndrome followed by an apostrophe at the end or whether it is down syndrome take a pause and think it is important to learn the correct spelling especially in medical science this is the correct spelling the correct word is down syndrome it is not down syndrome now let's all take a look at these two babies and try to spot the differences differences in the facial profile this differences in the morphogenic features of these two babies can you spot any differences you can pause the video and try to spot as many differences as you can now let's look what are the features typical features present here you can see the smaller head in comparison to this baby you can see the upslanting eyes the eyes are upslanting like this the outer canthus is higher than the inner canthus this is called a mongoloid slant you can see the epicanthic fold how do you identify an epicanthic fold the inner canthus will be rounded rather than pointed as in normal children you can see the flat mid face you can see the depressed nasal bridge or the low nasal bridge you can see the short nose or small nose you can see a smooth philtrum in comparison to this baby you can see the thin upper lip and you can also appreciate the smaller chin now to a beginner this might be confusing or maybe slightly difficult to appreciate but with enough experience and after seeing a lot of children with these features these facial features it will be fairly easy to identify morphologically at least a baby who has the phenotype associated with down syndrome down syndrome has an incidence of 1 in 660 to 1 in 800 newborns according to the nelson textbook of pediatrics this is 1 in 733 newborns it is the most common trisomy in humans and it is the most common genetic etiology of moderate intellectual disability now we have to know that the life expectancy of a person suffering from down syndrome is typically for 50 to 55 years premature aging and increased risk of alzheimer's disease is classically associated with down syndrome fewer than expected deaths are associated in a patient of down syndrome due to solid tumors and ischemic heart disease that means the presence of down syndrome is partially protective against death with solid tumors and ischemic heart disease but there is increased risk of death from congenital heart diseases and leukemia the risk of having a child with down syndrome or trisomy 21 is highest if the mother is aged more than 35 years but 80% of infants with down syndrome are born to women aged less than 35 years just because the women less than 35 years have a higher birth rate what are the signs and symptoms of down syndrome in general they have low muscular tone or hypotonia they have been they have a open mouth with protruding tongue and hyper flexibility of joints they are classically associated with intellectual disability as told before there is brachycephaly upslanting palpebral fissure i have shown you hypoplasia of frontal sinuses small nose depressed nasal bridge and inner epicanthic fold as we have shown in the eyes there are brush filled spots fine lens opacities various type of refractive errors like myopia or hypermetropia strabismus or squint acquired cataract in adulthood in the ears there is hearing loss of both conductive and sensorineural type and there is occurrence of otitis media 
in dentition there is hypoplasia of the teeth but it is partially protective towards occurrence of caries the neck is short with loose skin folds in the hands there is short metacarpals and phalanges with hypoplasia of the middle phalanx of the fifth finger clinodactyly or inward curvature of the fingers there is a single transverse palmar crease and in the dermatoglyphics there is ulnar loop dermal ridge pattern on all digits and distal portion of the palmal axial triradius in the feet there is a wide gap and plantar crease between first and second toe in the pelvis there is outward lateral flare of iliac wings which can be appreciated on an x ray and there is shallow acetabular angle cardiac defects are present in almost 50% of children with down syndrome common being endocardial cushion defect ventricular septal defect patent ductus arteriosus arterial atrial septal defect an aberrant subclavian artery and in the later age it may be associated with mitral valve prolapse and aortic regurgitation in the pulmonary circulation we can find a pulmonary system we can find recurrent respiratory infections laryngotracheobronchomalacia pulmonary hypertension and development of asthma in the later adult in the gastrointestinal there is occurrence of celiac disease tracheoesophageal fistula and presence of duodenal atresia in the skin it is cutis marmorata and dry hyperkeratotic skin the hair is fine soft sparse and there is straight pubic hair at adolescence in the genitalia there is a small penis with decreased testicular volume there may be occurrence of primary gonadal deficiency almost all the males are infertile although fertility has been documented in some of the females and the occasional features are seizures webbed neck incomplete fusion of vertebral arches of spine you can see the single transverse palmar crease present in these two children which is specific for highly specific for children with down syndrome so what are the hall's criteria to aid in diagnosis out of all the clinical features we have discussed these 10 are the hall's criteria presence of four or more of these criteria is highly specific for the presence of down syndrome in the child so how do we screen a pregnant mother in the first trimester for the risk of presence of down syndrome we do three evaluations we do beta hcg from the maternal serum we do pregnancy associated plasma protein a that is papa and we check for the nuchal translucency if we check these three things together they have a sensitivity of detecting almost 87% of the cases of down syndrome in the first trimester itself while in the second trimester we have to do the quad test quad means four so we have to do four tests that is beta hcg unconjugated estriol inhibin and alpha fetoprotein all these tests have to be done in the maternal serum in down syndrome there is usually increased beta hcg and inhibin and decreased estriol and alpha fetoprotein presence of these parameters can detect almost 80% of the cases of down syndrome in the second trimester itself but if we take integrated screening that means the tests of first trimester and second trimester together and use them to diagnose or use them to screen for down syndrome it can detect almost 95% of the cases of down syndrome in the first and second trimester what are the various newer methods of diagnosis we can detect so cell free cell free fetal dna by next generation sequencing and it can detect almost 98% of the cases of down syndrome in the antenatal period so coming to the genetics of down syndrome if we take all cases of down syndrome into account 95% cases of down syndrome is caused by trisomy 21 1% cases have mosaicism in them that means some cells possess trisomy 21 some cells are normal but in 4% of cases there is translocation with chromosome 21 mainly robertsonian translocation so what is robertsonian translocation basically it occurs in acrocentric chromosomes there are two chromosomes and the long arm of one chromosome gets uh, cut and attached to the long arm of another chromosome creating a bigger chromosome that is called robertsonian translocation the genes in the smaller arms of both the chromosomes get lost as a result the clinical features associated with 
or clinical features similar to trisomy 21 occur so as you can see in this karyotype report all the chromosomes are two in number but in the 21 there is three chromosomes so trisomy 21 the um, abnormality present in 95 percent cases of down syndrome chromosomal analysis is indicated in every patient suspected of having down syndrome so coming to this chromosome 21 there are a lot of genes in the chromosome 21 which can which are the causes of all the classical features associated with down syndrome out of these these two genes dyrk1a and dscr1 are the potential targets for therapy in down syndrome and are being evaluated so what can we do if we are suspecting down syndrome in a child so at birth we have to ask some questions is this your first child and if not does any older sibling of this child have any known birth defect in the age two months to two years we have to ask did this child have any serious delay in st sitting standing or walking compared to the other children of similar age that means were there any gross developmental delay features present can he or she name at least one object that is animal toy cup spoon etc and does he or she speak at all that means if he or she can utter any recognizable words in the later age group that is, that is three years to nine years we have to ask is the child's speech in any way different from normal compared to the children of his similar age we have to assess the tone of the child we have to squeeze the muscle to feel the resistance to compression we have to lift up and move up move the limb to feel the resistance to movement we have to look at the posture the way the child sleeps or stands and we have to look at the child's ability to sit walk and run so here is a demonstration of how to assess uh, the tone in an infant this is a floppy infant as you can see when the examiner is lifting the infant with his arms the head and neck are falling back or falling down and when the child is held in a ventral suspension the head arms legs are falling back such as and such as it look it just look like looking like an umbrella how to assess the posture in a child uh, these three children can you spot the difference this is a normal child as you can see by the flexion attitude and posture of uh, all of all the joints of the body this is a frog like posture the hips are externally rotated and depressed the tone is depressed and the hips are externally rotated and this child we have to give extra support to the neck and head so that to maintain the patency of the airway otherwise the child's head and neck are falling back the arms are falling back this is called a hypotonic child so what urgent action we need to take we have to do the prenatal screening and all the diagnostic tests are widely available we uh, have to know that the down syndrome has a variable phenotype and the diagnosis should be considered in any child who has developmental delay and or hypotonia we have to learn to recognize the characteristic features of a child with down syndrome as we have discussed before we have to relay our suspicions to the parents as soon as possible and we have to offer counseling and support to them we have to give the parents as much information as needed uh, regarding the condition we have to the common doubt that the parents ask uh, is oh, if my one child is suffering from down syndrome what is the recurrence risk of my next child suffering from down syndrome we have to tell that it all depends upon the genetics if the down syndrome in this child is due to trisomy 21 then the recurrence risk is one percent but if robertsonian translocation or any translocation is present in this child like in the four percent of cases the risk increases by five to seven times that means almost five to seven percent risk is there we have to refer the child to early intervention services to avail early intervention services because if begun within three months these services enhance the development of their full potential these include various occupational therapy physiotherapy speech therapy medial arches in soles and sensory integration therapy and we have to remember that we have to concentrate on the strength not the weaknesses because many adults with down syndrome become productive members of the society if we provide them with timely early intervention services we have to counsel in detail we have to prevent the stigma because in indian populations it usually becomes a blame game the in-laws blame the mother 
the mother blames the father because they think that this is a genetic condition this uh, they confuse genetic with hereditary and they start asking questions about where the disease came from from the father or from the mother we have to reinforce the fact that the problem can be from any side so nobody should be blamed and we have to implement quality educational programs we have to nurse the child in a stimulating home environment with good medical care because this will enable the child to become a contributing member of their family and community so if a mother asks how can i help my child with down syndrome we have to tell them what we have to tell them that the children with down syndrome are usually friendly likable social they are trainable educable and can be trusted as employees and we have to nurture them in a supportive home environment we have to treat them similarly or exactly in the same way as other family members we have to keep them always connected to their environment continuously and we have to communicate and interact with them as much as we can now coming to the last part the health supervision as the down syndrome is associated with a lot of abnormalities and complications in the future how how frequently do we screen for that so first coming to congenital heart disease we have to screen the patients with down syndrome for congenital heart disease by echocardiography at birth and as much as the need arises that means if suppose the murmur appears later we have to evaluate on an as needed basis we have to do the ophthalmological evaluation for strabismus cataract and nystagmus every 6 monthly in the first year that means twice then every one year till 5 years that means four times then every 2 years till 12 years that means 3 times then every 3 yearly after 12 years of age hearing impairment we have to screen them for hearing hearing impairment at birth or by 3 months then 6 monthly for 3 years and then annually we have to screen the patient for constipation and keep a high index of suspicion we have to screen the patient for celiac disease at 2 years or if any symptoms of celiac disease appear later on we have to know that the children with down syndrome are more prone for hematological diseases like leukemia anemia and all those things megaloblastic anemia and all those things so we have to do a complete blood count after 6 months and then annually hypothyroidism is notorious in down syndrome children that's why we have to do the thyroid function test first at birth then at 6 to 12 months and then every year we have to assess the growth and development of child down syndrome children every 3 monthly in the first year and then annually important point to note here is that we cannot use the commonly used who and iap growth chart for children with down syndrome there are separate growth charts available for children with down syndrome we have to use those charts to assess their growth and development as the down syndrome children are more prone for obstructive sleep apnea we have to screen them uh, at one year we have to screen all the children with down syndrome at least once by 4 years and then at each visit at the down syndrome children are prone for atlantoaxial subluxation due to the displacement of the c1 vertebra so we have to screen them at each visit and if the patient is planning to take part in a contact sports we have to do radiographs at 3 to 5 years the down syndrome children have a high propensity for developing psychiatric and behavioral disorders then uh, that's why we have to screen them at each visit and the gynecological care has to be taken in adolescent girls we have to know some things that as i told before the down syndrome children if taken care of properly can become productive members of the society as pablo pineda the first european with down syndrome to graduate with a university degree told he told that i always say i am pablo pineda and i have down syndrome there is a big difference between having and being being can crush you down and having shows it is only one feature this is jamie brewer who is an actor and this is john frank stephens who is an american advocate and olympian athlete and an actor and he told that if you take one thing away from today i want you to know that i am a man with down syndrome and my life is worth living so what is the take home message as you can see in this image barbie also launched a doll with down syndrome so the take home message is down syndrome is the most common chromosomal cause of intellectual disability we have to do prenatal screening and diagnosis because these facilities are widely available and must be offered to all the pregnant women down syndrome has a variable phenotype with wide array of complications periodic evaluation and assessment of various health parameters needs to be done 
Early intervention and proper institution of therapy can enable them to lead a healthy and productive life in the society. With this, we come to the conclusion of this presentation. Please share with all your friends, all the parents, all the healthcare givers, all the pediatricians and all the doctors that you know this brief awareness about Down syndrome so that we can detect children with Down syndrome early, take the necessary steps and take all the steps to improve the quality of their life. Thank you.